starting the video right there so hey everybody welcome to today's q a video <laughs> where are you going crazy crazy the camera's over here buddy hey camera's right there say welcome to today's q a What's up you guys, welcome to today's video. It's just gonna be a simple little Q&A. We have a huge list of questions that have been asked over the last few months. There's probably a few hundred on that list, so we're gonna dive into a small stack of them today and uh, answer some, there's some good ones in there. I was flipping through them, I'm like, all right, all right. These are finally a list of some pretty decent questions that I haven't answered on this channel in a while, so uh, let's go do that. Today, uh, we have an assistant. We have an assistant. You know this van here. Hey, right there. Hey, Jeffy. Hey, how are you? Uh, what's question number one? Question number one, water jugs. Where to buy them and can you drink out of them? All right, let's get into that one. Thanks. Thank you there, Mr. Jeffy Bear. So for water jugs in my van, I've got these ones here. They're from a company called Reliance. They're 27 and a half liters. I like them because like the front of them, this is my sink. Yeah, it just kind of runs out of my van. I put my cup underneath here anytime I need to use it. Um, you can buy these things pretty much just about anywhere. Um, I left the links to all the stuff we're going to talk about in today's video on my website at vancityvanlife.ca. So just go over there. You'll find the links for these. But um, Jeff said you can buy them on Home Depot. You can buy them on Amazon, uh, Cabela's, and Bass Pro Shops. All those kind of areas carry them. Um, yeah, these are the Reliance ones. I really like them. And can you drink under them? Yes, these are actually made for water storage and water storage only. And they are safe to drink out of. Otherwise, they would not be here in my van. Um, Cruise is the one that uses this water more than I do. I have a tendency of just going out and buying water. Um, because sometimes when you hit towns, they're not always the greatest of flavored. So when I go to places... I usually fill these things up inside of grocery stores or out here there's a Canadian Tire with a Phillips station inside and I usually end up buying purified water because some towns because I'm on the move so much that some towns the water doesn't taste so great out here in Squamish on the other hand where I am currently um, there's plenty of places around town to fill up water and I haven't purchased water since I've been here over the last month and some because the city water here actually tastes really good next question what kettle do you use and where did you get it? My kettle, okay. All right guys, so what do I use for a kettle? <laughs> um, I use this one here. It's an uh, Overmont, I don't know, aluminum, whatever this thing is. I got it off of Amazon. It's like a camping kettle or whatever. Um, it works great. I lost the little cap on the top that allows you to lift up the lid here. Yeah, it's pretty simple. I picked it up on Amazon, I don't know, it was like 10 or $15. Um, nothing fancy. Next question, sir. Next question, coffee equipment. How do you make your coffee? So how I make my coffee in the morning is obviously boil water, get my cup, and I use this little plastic little pour over coffee system thing. These are only a couple of dollars, super cheap. I pop those on top. I don't know why I'm showing you this. I'm pretty sure he's showing that piece would make you understand it. <laughs> pop the little filter in there put the coffee in and I just do the good old classic pour over system. And I've been using this system ever since I moved into the van. This was the very first one I got, I think maybe in the first month of my van life and I've been using it ever since. It's simple and it works. All right, next up. Garbage pails on doors. What's in them? Why are they there? Where can they be bought? So my garbage cans are currently off my door because we have a project going on right now. So everything is off my doors. What's in my garbage? Garbage. <laughs> why it's on my door? Because I need a place to put my garbage. Um, so the reason why I have two of them, so I have one dedicated garbage can. I keep all the extra bags and stuff at the bottom so I can just take one out and throw it out. And... Sorry guys, a mess. And inside the second one that was on my door, is just miscellaneous stuff from you know cleaners like to breeze and dog stuff and bear spray and just a bunch of miscellaneous catch-all items so when i redo my door 
This will be some of the stuff that will be put inside of my door panel, allowing me to remove one can off the outside of the door. But, um, so yeah, so I'm hoping to make the inside of my new door panels, once those doors and stuff are finished, um, hold all of this stuff. Those garbage cans are by a company called Glad. It's called The Roommate or something like that. As far as I understand, they're a Canadian only garbage can. This was a huge question on, on my channel when I first put the cans on my door. Everybody's like, I want those. Where do I get them? I think they wanted them just because of the side profile of it. It's got this like little curved bend. They look nice on the doors, but um, somebody also told me that they are on Amazon.com. So you might want to go on there and check it out or click on the Amazon Canada one amazon.ca and see if you can order it from Canada and have it shipped down to you. And I can't see why not because I order products from the American Amazon all the time. So yeah, just try amazon.ca and see if you guys can find them. All right, Vanna White, what's next? Okay, do you power your fridge, heater, speakers, etc., with a Jackery? All right, good question. Do I power everything in my van with a Jackery battery? The answer to that is no. So when I first started my van life, this could actually be a full blown, huge dedicated video on its own talking about the evolution of my power sources. But um, no, my van does not run off of the Jackery batteries. I do have an in-house battery system. I didn't always have this big fancy in-house battery system, but I run my entire van off of two 100 amp hour Canbat, which is the name of the company, Canbat Lithium uh, Winter Series batteries. So they're meant to be able to charge in cold weather. And those two deep cycle batteries are housed right inside of this cabinet here. And I have 300 watts of Renogy Solar up on my roof. So um, years ago, when I first got into the van, when I didn't have all of this big, beautiful, fancy build stuff, when my van was very simple, um, I used to run a lot of stuff on my Jackery. If I can remember, or if I can track down that video somewhere in my 1000 videos, I have a video where I installed, not this one, I installed the Jackery 500 battery into the top of this cabinet, running it off of one of these switches, and I used it to power my lights and all my general stuff in my van, and it worked really damn good. Um, but as time moves on with your van life, as you get deeper and deeper into your van life, your power needs are usually going to increase. If you're the kind of person that can keep things simple for the long haul, high five to you. Good, good job. Me, on the other hand, I have a tendency, and I think a lot of people do, as the years move on, you have a thing with just adding a few more luxuries. So for me, as soon as you start getting into it a bit more, you add a fridge, which then requires more power. And then you end up adding things like a little sound system, which is overboard for most people, but you add the little sound system and that requires more power. And then now that I have the heat source in my van, now that's giving me a constant power draw the whole time the heater's on, making me need a full van in-house power system where running everything in my van right now is just not possible off of um, off of a Jackery battery. Like that's that's a huge amount of power power going out on a constant basis so the jackery batteries are really 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 good for for all the people that are just starting van life that don't want to fuss with all the wiring and all the solar and all that other crazy stuff but jackery is amazing for that and their little jackery 240 um, jackery emailed me the other day and said that this little one their original explorer 240 the one you see on my channel like all the time i love this battery um they're dropping the price on the 240s and the 300s you okay crazy what's the matter buddy <laughs> what's the matter bro you hungry well let's stop the video and get you some treats oh crazy okay he likes these these greenies they're his favorite hey crazy just make you walk bro you could have just waited a minute <laughs> Anyway, Jackery emailed me and notified me that they've actually dropped the price by $50, which is a huge amount. So the new full-time price as of January 18th on these will be $50 cheaper than they have been since the beginning. So they've dropped the Explorer 240 and the Explorer 300, which is like uh, another one that they released. It's a tiny bit bigger than that one. But yeah, guys, um, the links to this stuff is all on my website at vancityvanlife.ca. 
But do I power my van on that stuff? No, I don't. Can you? You can power some things on your van off the jackeries for sure, but you always got to remember whatever you're pulling off of these batteries for power draw, you've got to have a way to put the power back in these things. So they make the little port, they make a portable solar panels that can plug into them. So like there is definitely options with it, but if you're going to progress your van life into ways like I am, where you're running all of these bigger things, you will end up outgrowing your jackery battery. And that's just the truth. And that's why I think if you're going to start your van life, buy the small one because you never know where your van life's going to go two or three years from now. So if you pick up the little one now, this one will kind of be a part of your journey forever. I use this one all the freaking time, even though I have a big, big system in my van. All right, we got to go find Cruzy. He's on the loose. <laughs> How's that, buddy? How do you make money? How do I make money? Make I make money by doing this. Hey, buddy, how you doing today, hey. man? Great, how you doing? How do I make money? I put my phone in front of my face. I'm like, what's up, you guys? Welcome to our adventures. I make my full-time living on YouTube. So when I first moved into my van, I was still holding on to some DJ stuff. I got into DJing weddings, even though weddings really weren't my thing. But I did what I could at the beginning just to kind of, you know, keep money coming into my life when I started because I started van life super broke. And uh, as soon as YouTube started to make me a tiny bit of money, I went all in because I learned something in my life. If you don't go 100% in on something, you'll never get 100% out of it. So once YouTube got to the point where it was making me a little bit of money that I probably think I could have just barely skimmed by on, I dropped all the DJ stuff and I focused on YouTube 100%. And now here we are over three years later producing everyday videos here on YouTube. So this is how I earn money. So I earn money from YouTube, also a few brand companies that I work through that, that give us money. So like Jackery, um, they pay us every month to mention them two times for 60 seconds. And also selling stickers, which is a massive thing for us, which really helps us a lot. Plus, we have all our merchandise and stuff like that that you guys see me wearing on my channel. But yeah, that's how I earn a living is right here because of all of you beautiful people. Dun, dun, dun. What's next? Okay. Can Cruz get in and out of van by himself? <laughs> Why don't you build ramps, passenger seat bent, or other cruise upgrades? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> see? Peace out. Forget that idea. So I used to have a ramp for cruise. So I lived in my van, if you're new around here, um, for the first year and some with another bulldog of mine that passed away, uh, little disco, big disco, fat disco, whatever. <laughs> anyway, I had disco, so I got a ramp for him. So when we were sitting camped out somewhere, I could put the ramp out and disco could get it, get it in and out of it all the time. He really liked it and I enjoyed having it because he was, he was older. So when he got tired of us, he always wanted to go back in the van. So having the ramp was a beautiful thing. So after he passed away, I got rid of it, made some space. Then Cruz came along into our world, this little guy here. So I went out and bought myself another ramp. But the ramps are very cumbersome to keep in the van. Though it's a very large piece. And for the amount of times that it was necessary to have, I don't know, it just didn't make sense to me where I could just pick Cruz up and put him in the van. And when he wants out, I just pick him up and take him out of the van. So maybe at a point in time in my life when, when picking him up is not possible, then maybe at that point I'll do it to make it easier for me. But for Cruz, he just looks at me and kind of gives me a little whining little sound and I just pick him up and put him in the van uh, myself. And for those of you that uh, um, want to know about putting a a bench system in the front for Cruz, because so many people are like, why don't you put somewhere in the front seat for Cruz to stand? You know, why don't you build something fancy for Cruz? Because I don't need to. In my front seat, that's my poo bucket. So that's a luggable loo, just a standard little luggable loo with a toilet seat on the top. Cruz stands on that and looks out the front window or sleeps on this seat, puts his head on my toilet. Not real classy, right? But uh, yeah, I have no need to, to build something up there. Because if I end up building a, a wood platform there, the problem with that is every time I want to swivel the front seat, having something up there, that whole wood structure would have to come out in order to swivel this seat around and get it backwards. Where now when I want to swivel it, 
It's easy. I take the poop, the poop pail out, swivel the seat, throw the pail back behind the back of the seat. So, um, yeah. So ramp, uh, no. I think we're doing it right here. Doing good. <laughs> With the heat loss of your window, do you regret the window? Obviously having windows in the back of the van or anywhere in your van, you're going to get heat loss. So if I was running my propane heater, I might be in a different situation than I am now. So because the propane heater was good, but not as good as the dry air one I have now. So because the ones we have in our van are so powerful that having that extra window is necessary to fluctuate the heat because literally that thing can get too hot too fast and having a window open while the heater is on sometimes is a great way to kind of like iron out that perfect temperature where with my propane heater even having the roof vent open was a massive loss in heat now i am really honestly thankful i have the window so on my back windows here on the inside is just a pink piece of pink foam board that I taped in there. You can see that's just pink foam board in there. So I put that over top of my back windows just because otherwise that's another huge spot for losing air, for losing heat. But yeah, man, I'm super thankful for having that big window with the big heater that I have. I don't know how long this video is yet, but let's go one more. Okay, oh, one more. Why don't you add a generator to keep your batteries charged? Ooh, I like this one, I like this one. A generator in van life. Okay, I have some opinions on this one because I have been out in some nice backcountry spots and somebody next door fires up a generator and removes my pure silence. I've also been at a Walmart parking lot where you're having a great night's sleep. Somebody pulls in beside you, fires up that generator, destroys it. You hear this all night long. I think unless you're living out in the desert or you're way back in the bush and you plan on being away from people, those are the only times a generator is great. I will never add a generator to my life. Maybe if I have a bigger rig or something like that and I have a storage, I might add a little tiny one, like a little baby little one that maybe puts out a couple hundred watts. For those moments where I'm in the bush in the winter or something like that and I need power, sure, maybe. But I don't think generators are a great thing in van life if you plan on spending time in cities so me and jeff are sitting right here in this parking lot if i fired up a generator right now you guarantee all the all the parks workers that are standing right over there right now are going to come over and be like excuse me right you got to be neighborly so uh, there's so many people that are just unneighborly when it comes to generators like they'll pull up beside you at walmart going right beside you and you're like dude i'm in bed okay did you have to do that but it happens all the time. So if you are gonna add a generator to your life, just be neighborly, you know what I mean? Just think about your neighbors, because technically if I'm pulling up beside this guy and I don't know who he is, I wanna be neighborly, I wanna be quiet, I wanna be a good neighbor, I wanna be friendly, I wanna be nice. And that same thing applies with anything you do in your van. Any town that you're in, you're the visitor and they are all your neighbors. Be courteous, be friendly, be nice, be clean, be presentable and all that other friendly stuff that has to go on to give us a good name. Pulling up on the side of a city street somewhere in a town, putting a generator in the front of your van, firing that generator on, going to bed is not neighborly. Don't do it. That's the kind of stuff that gives us a bad name and a hard time. There is a place for a generator. Like if you're in the middle of the desert in Arizona, have at her. If you're 50 miles back into the bush and you haven't seen anybody for days, have at her. Just don't pull up beside somebody like me and turn on your generator. <laughs> oh, great. Do, can you hear me back there? Just, be, just because I just said don't turn on your generator beside me, you watch it. Every night from now on, someone's going to be like, there's Chrome, pull up. <laughs> anyway, guys, if you're going to take anything out of the last little bit I said, just be a good van lifer. Be friendly to everybody around you. Clean up the areas that you go. Throw things in the garbage and i learned something in this town this is a really cool tip so i was talking to one of the city workers here and uh they had suggested to me and i never really realized this before but she was like most towns have a free recycling place in every community and so out here she told me where it was and i went and checked it out so they have um the local garbage 
um, truck company has a recycling place up front. You literally pull in, it's free of charge, you pull up and then you can sort your garbage into their garbage cans and then leave. So you can't leave garbage there, but it's all your recyclables, like your papers, your plastics, your cans, your... So you can go dump your stuff in those bins and then whatever's left over, you can stick in the bins around the community. But she had said to me, if maybe you can let van lifers know that when they're in towns to stop filling up the local city bins because it gets to be a nuisance for them. And uh, yeah, I don't know, I guess that comes with being being friendly, being neighborly. But uh, finding local recycling places is something I didn't know about. So if you're tra ever traveling through an area or you happen to get a bunch of Amazon boxes in a big shipment or something like that and you don't know what to do with it, find the local garbage truck company or find the local recycling center and just go drop your stuff off there. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching today's video and the links to all the stuff that we babbled about today are on vancityvanlife.ca and Jeffy back there is laughing. What are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? I'm just reading some of these lovely questions you have here. Oh, you're just reading the questions? Yeah, <laughs> and I just laughed. <laughs> like this question here, how often do you use the bag compared to going to a washroom? I just think that's hilarious. <laughs> and it's a bear sh** the wood? Yes, he does. <laughs> Boom, mic drop, enough said. Peace out. <laughs>